What's up everybody? Just want to make this quick video and show you guys uh, the issue I had. This is my 2014 Traverse. Uh, went out to eat, got back in the car, um, and the radio didn't work, the chimes, none of the uh, turn signal sounds worked, anything like that. Um, everything was gone. Uh, radio worked fine, everything was good, so you think that, you know, it's probably a, a amp problem. Um, I guess I should explain real fast. All the sound for the chimes, the blinkers, all that crap all goes through the radio and through the speaker. So, obviously your first suspect is probably a fuse, so you're going to want to check your fuse panel, which is right here. Wherever my flashlight is, right here below your uh, glove compartment. Right up here where the fuse, or where uh, the flashlight's shining on that panel there. That'll open up and give you access to your fuse block. Apartment fuse block, so check in there first. Make sure your fuses aren't going on, like your amp fuse, your radio fuse. Um, even your display fuse can have issues, body control module fuse, whatever. Check those few things. Um, when you're checking fuses, pull them out and check them. That's how you're going to find out for sure if they're good. And check them with a, with a meter, you know. I got this fluke. Um, check them with that. They put a multimeter on uh, ohms. Make sure you get a good good reading and it's not open. Um, if it's open, you got a garbage fuse. So um, what I found and what fixed it is, I'll actually, I already did it on my driver's side, so I want to show you on the passenger side. But it was the um, connection between the door panel and the body or the frame, whatever you want to call it, the connector here was pretty corroded and for some reason was causing all my radio function to basically be non-existent um whatever so let me pull it open real fast and see if i can even get some light in there and i'll show you real quick i know you guys want a quick video but i'm not quick at anything anymore all right i got the light set up so you just pull this little top flat back here it's literally just like a little hinge. Just pull it back. It's going to feel tight. I promise you you won't break it. Pull it down until it stops. That'll be loose. You can pull that out. Now, I haven't pulled this one out, so we're going to see together. And boom, look at the green in the bottom right-hand corner. That is, uh, and it's wet, too. You can see the moisture all over sitting right on top of it. So that can easily bypass that gasket that's right around the edge there, if it wanted to, and seep into those connectors. And uh, it's probably been puddling up in the bottom. As you can see, that's why it's corroded down below. Let me get my other flashlight. And if you can see in there, it's hard because I can't get a good angle. But even at the bottom, sitting there is some corrosion itself. My camera will focus. You can see it on the tip of my finger. So what I did, and now be careful doing this because if you got any type of power on in the car, you can short shit out. But... I just took a little brass brush and just lightly knocked it. You can hear I just triggered a lock because I jumped it, jumped the pin, so be careful. Um, and I just lightly knocked some of that shit off there. Going up and around. Just try to be mindful not to get in there too hard. That way you don't bust any pins or anything like that. But yeah, you can even see it's wet moisture up there reflection on my finger so yeah it literally sits right at the top of that connection point so we not put water right in it don't ask um so yeah clean those up as much as possible same thing with your uh connector here i'm gonna do that real fast and then I'll come back also if you want you can take a straight pick and very lightly scrape out the pins just on the just on the ends don't stick it in there they're going to end up whopping it out, and it's not going to want to sit in there nicely. And make a good connection when you go to plug it back in. So just real lightly, you know, just literally almost not even the metal, just like the plastic. Get that corrosion out of there. Again, do not jam your your pick in there, or it's going to whop out those pins, and you're not going to have a good connection point. Just wanted to throw that in there. Next thing I do is take this Molly Coat. It's 111 compound. This is the shit we use, stuff we use at work, excuse my French, from DuPont. And uh, it's just dielectric, real good, made for cold storage and stuff like that. So it's uh, 
It's good with plastic and all that. Won't mount your plastic or do any damage like that. And I'm going to take this. I can't do it with two hands. Um, you should be smart enough to get the idea. But I'm going to take it like a tube of chapstick and just rub it around on the connectors and stuff it in there. You know, get a decent layer. Don't gum it all up, but we not to where it's going to keep that water out. You know, get some on the gasket on the outside here as well. And that'll, you know, create a good connection. Keep the water out. Keep the moisture out. Keep corrosion at bay. So, yeah, I'll do that now and then come back. So, just like that, take your finger, smear it in the holes. And, uh, yeah, go on and so forth. All right. So, here it is now. All smeared in there nice and uniform. Got it on the gasket. You can see it's in those, in those, uh, connection points there. Another thing I like to do, and I just like to do this for peace of mind, you don't have to, but stick it in the slot where it goes, obviously. Close it once. Oh, there goes my alarm. Yeah, see, weird stuff happens once you start playing with connectors. So, anyways, lock it in there and uh, pull it out once or twice. Obviously, don't do it till you bust the pin. Just be easy with it. And I like to look, and you can see where the pins pierced that dielectric and where they didn't. So um, that'll help kind of just point out exactly what pins your corrosion is on. So in those bottom right corner, that them two down there obviously got a lot of corrosion. So I got some uh, grease on the uh, pins themselves on the internal part now, on the male pins, and obviously in the female uh, connection points also you know get this thing a knockout every now and then kind of let that corrosion fall out water whatever and uh yeah so you can obviously see where it pushed in the dielectric grease and you can see it's even smeared in on here now which is good that's what i want to see so yeah i go around and do that to every every door connection point that's going to keep that uh speaker problem radio problem at bay so that's pretty much it guys go around like i said keep peace of mind not to uh jump out any uh pins and short something out um like i probably just did screw around got the horn going off but it works fine now i'll show you that the radio works just for proof you can obviously hear the blinkers blinking that's the easiest way to test it if those are working in your radios nine times out of ten working there's your chime there's your radio so yeah sweet i'm not gonna play music or get copyrighted thanks for watching let me know if you got any questions i'll answer them later